It's called Trikosi, and it means wife or slave of the gods. It's an ancient West African tradition that to this day enslaves thousands of women and young girls, some as young as seven years old. They're condemned to a life of slave labor and sexual servitude, not because they did anything wrong, but because someone in their family committed a crime, sometimes generations ago. And to pay for the crime, their families must send young virgins to be the slaves of tribal priests, often for the rest of their lives. This is a Trikosi slave girl, right? A Trikosi girl. How old is this little girl? Seven years old. Do you know why you're here? No. What crime is this child paying for? My, uh, her uncle committed adultery. Do you like it here? Do you miss your parents? Yes. Slavery in this part of Africa is nothing new. Hundreds of years ago, at the height of the slave trade, the Volta River was one of its main highways. Millions of slaves were shipped to the Americas from coastal villages like these. But today, more than a century after slavery was abolished, thousands of young girls are held in bondage up and down this river. To find the girls and the priests, we had to travel to some of West Africa's most isolated places, deep in marshlands of the Volta River, in villages where Christianity is still seen as a hostile intrusion. This is where we found the tribal priest Gidisu, attended by one of his ten slave wives. But before anyone would even talk to us, we had to appease the gods with ten dollars and a couple of bottles of hard liquor. Tell me, what is your problem with our religion that you've come all the way from your country to find out about it? We want to understand why young girls are made to pay for the sins or the crimes of their family members. It is our fetish gods that demand the girls. Death will strike your family unless you bring a young virgin to us. And that's how a life of slavery begins for thousands of African girls. They are brought to these shrines or village churches when they are still children, and they may stay until they die. They are meant to marry the gods, but it's the priests who'll stand in. By day, the priests make them work in their homes and on their farms. By night, they demand sex. And they don't have to pay the girls, clothe them, or even feed them. Trocosis are not slaves. How can the person I marry be a slave? Do you think these girls are happy to be your wife? They haven't chosen you. Are they happy? Oh, fine. But it's not fine for Akuponyo. Today, she becomes a Trukosi slave. She's not allowed to talk to us, to tell us what she thinks. She doesn't have to. Akuponyo is carrying her dowry on her head and the money she's collected to support herself as a Trukosi slave. She hasn't committed any crime, but years ago, her great-grandfather murdered someone. And according to these people's traditions, Akuponyo is the latest young woman to have to pay for the sins of her ancestors. <laughs> Family members accompany Akuponyo on her six-mile walk to the tribal priest. They are sacrificing her because they believe that otherwise, the gods will bring death to the family to punish them for their forefathers' crimes. It is a never-ending cycle of fear, says Akuponyo's uncle. Whatever the custom demands for the debt to stop, that's what the family will do, even though it's so painful for us. It's a public ritual of humiliation. Akuponyo has to walk a gauntlet of jeering villagers and beg them for money. The tribal priest she will serve is Maku. As far as I'm concerned, 
It is good because it deters others from committing crimes. We saw her from the beginning when she was waiting to come here, crying a lot. Why do you think she was crying if it's so good? If you see her weeping, she's crying from joy. But Akuponyo's humiliation continues inside this hut that's their holy shrine. She's supposed to become the wife of a god, but in reality, one of the priests can take her as a slave for work and for sex. What you are seeing are the secret rituals of atonement that have never before been filmed. Everything from Akuponyo's former life must now be stripped away. Her clothes, her beads, her earrings, and finally her pride. The work of a slave begins at dawn. There are 21 in Maku's village. There's two over there. We wanted to meet some of them, so we asked Maku to show us around. There is this little girl who was brought in just two weeks ago, and there are old women who've been here all their lives. If you had been able to choose, how would you have spent your life? What would you have done? They brought me here so young, I had no say in my life. Now that I'm about to die, I don't care what happens to me. But even a whole life of servitude doesn't pay off a debt to the gods. Girls keep paying for the same offense from generation to generation. You're the replacement for your sister who died? Yes. Are you happy here? I guess. In private, Christine told us a different story. You will become the wife of a priest? Do you want to? Huh? No. Do you want to run away? Yes, I want to run away. And why don't you run away? Where are your parents? My parents died. They died? For the five years she's been here, Christine has been forced to trade in her school books for hard labor. When my father died, I stopped going to school, even though I had wanted to become a doctor. I feel very sad because by staying here, I have lost my chance at an education. This is the future awaiting Christine if she stays in the shrine, chasing away the birds that scavenge the priest's harvest and bearing the priest's children. Even if they can run away, the world they find outside is not much kinder. Once branded a Trukosi slave, their families don't want them back. When I ran away from the priest, life was so hard. People ran away from me. Even my relatives turned their backs. <laughs> Mercy Senyale is still an outcast after running away from a priest who kept her enslaved for 15 years. And all because her great-grandmother stole a pair of gold earrings. She has three children now. The priest first forced himself on her when she was 11 years old. The first night, he wanted to sleep with me, and I refused. So he beat me so hard, my cries woke up all the other slave girls. And I finally gave in. Can you tell us about the priest? The priest is not very big, but he's very wicked. This is the priest Mercy served, Togbe Aklidopo. By day, he's a government official with the Ministry of Health. By night, he's a husband to 10 slaves who've borne him 60 children. That is my son. We've talked to one girl at least who's spoken to us about your shrine, and she said that you beat her, that you forced her to work with no money, that she hardly had anything to eat, and that you forced her to sleep with you when she was 11 years old. And you believe it? Do you believe it? I'm asking you. That's what I'm also asking. Do you believe that story is never correct? All the girls, all the wives you take, do they all accept your advances? Do they all want to sleep with you, or do they have to? Having sex with a woman depends on love and affection. 
If the woman is not willing, you can't force it. Is the priest lying then when he tells us that everybody was happy and everybody was treated well? He is telling lies. He's telling a big lie. So many of us couldn't stand the suffering, we had to run away. Anyone who ran away was brought back by their parents and repeatedly raped again in this very building. Later, some of the girls were helped by Reverend Walter Pingpong. The sad part of it is that your parents brought you or your family brought you, so if you ran to them, they bring you back. You know, you, you just can't escape. International Needs does not want um, to replace the fetish priest. We do not Reverend want Ping Pong now leads the campaign to end slavery in Ghana. He's trying to convince the priest to set the girls free. Most of the priests that we've encountered are farmers, and so we give them cows. And what do they say when you say, here's a cow and a sheep for this 10-year-old girl? What do they say? They say, great? No, a lot of them will ask us, do you want me to go to bed with a cow or a goat? And I'm sorry, but this is about, you know, the understanding that some of them have. You know, there is some value to these girls that they, they can't really have in cows and goats. Which is sex. Which is sex, um, literally. Reverend Ping Pong has managed to free these 31 women from their priest for five cows and about a thousand dollars. At this liberation ceremony, the blood of a slaughtered goat marks the darkness of slavery and death. The white headbands mark freedom. The slaves' symbolic chains are cut and they jump from one world to the next. So far, 436 slaves have gone through these rituals and have been set free, but thousands more remain in captivity. And according to Togbe, the tribal priest, that's where they'll stay. This practice was in, was in existence before the white men came to Ghana. I shall also continue till I die.